I'm going to talk you through the sketchbooks that I took to interview when I was applying to universities to study architecture. Your sketchbooks should show um, your creativity, your thinking, and they shouldn't be as precious as your portfolio. So this first sketchbook was just um, a book of drawings that it was A4, sorry, A5, and I took everywhere. And it was just my way of getting better at drawing and understanding how mark making can convey um, what I was trying to show in, in different ways. So this was, I actually really liked this drawing, especially this button here. <laughs> this was on a bus and literally I only had about a few minutes. As you know, standing on a bus, you, not, you don't really have much opportunity to sketch. So I did as much as I could in the situations that I was in. So they were all like in between places, places of transit. Um, I like this drawing because, so maybe I held the sketchbook a bit wrong in the wrong way but um so this is a view of a train um where the sketchbook is landscape and I had a long time on that train journey I think I had about 20 minutes so I was able to draw quite a bit and um, I was able to draw my view change as well because you're obviously with the with people moving in and out of the train your view changes quite a bit and then this view is upside down but it's it's portrait and it's um a view of another part of the train but this was on the underground, I only had a few minutes, so I was only able to do half of it. But the way that two um, drawings end up blending in to each other um, along the bind, I thought, I think is really cool, and um, so did the interviewers. So again, in between moments, not being able to finish everything. Um, suitcase, a part of a pole on the train. And on this side, this is... Um, I think I was trying to be clever here, I was trying to draw the in-between space, so there were two people sat down in these two spaces, and I was drawing what was around them, so um, there's a bit of a seat coming through, the, in the yeah, the windows at the back, and yeah, especially because I didn't want to offend anyone. Um, yeah, again, a couple of few, a few drawings, I think I'm going backwards, so I think these were earlier drawings, and the ones that, um, that I showed at the beginning were later drawings. And it's all tonal, it's all in pencil. It just shows a really good, um, it shows that you're engaged and you're taking your sketchbook everywhere, even like when you're going on short journeys, to learn how to draw and to learn how to understand, um, to, to understand how to use mark making in a very effective manner. Um, because you don't have much time when you're on the train and stuff. So yeah, um, I think this is again a drawing within a drawing. Um, I think there's some stairs here. So it's probably at a station or something. Actually, I can see like a school um, leaderboard or something. So maybe I was in front of a school. But yeah, they kind of blend into each other. Again, two drawings blending into each other. One's a large scale, one's a smaller scale. Clearly I was on a bus. Um, I was very interested, this whole, during this period that I was taking the sketchbook around, I was very interested in transit, transition, movement. Um, and if you've seen my portfolio videos, you'll see like um, my A A two and A zero paintings were essentially one was on a bus, um, exploring that as a transition, as a journey. So um, that's that, that kind of tied in with my project, which was really good to show. And then this is when um, so you can tell the year back in twenty sixteen, I believe. Um, Selgas Kano had this was my drawing of the Selgas Kano pavilion and then I just wrote what I felt about it <laughs> which is good um, so yeah these are pictures of the Selgas Kano pavilion okay so this is my second sketchbook this was um, my AS level part parts of my AS level sketchbook and this is a very I was not precious with the sketchbook at all but they they loved it the interviews actually really really liked the sketchbook the most because it was just so uncontrolled, organic, raw. You could see that someone was tr really trying to like improve their way of using materials and marks. So here I used a stick, literally um, we sat outside of our art classroom, art studio, and we, um, we had to pick up sticks, stick them into paint and try and like draw a tree. So that was a really fun exercise because I shouldn't have chosen white paint, but <laughs> that's as well as you can see it in this photograph. And this was the tonal drawing of that same tree. Here I was using coffee as, um, so I took coffee granules, 
diluted them with water and used different um, applicators. So I'd use like a toothpick, um, a glue, like one of those glue spreaders that you would use in primary school, um, just sticks to create like, a, I mean I was just experimenting with a different like possible mark making, even a paintbrush I think in these parts I used a paintbrush, a pipette. And it kind of ended up looking like a landscape, so I kind of played along with that. Um, oh, I also put like salt um, on top of some of the coffee to see how that... And I think I put like some granules within the diluted granules just to see how the texture um, evolves. Um, so on, on a door handle, I think you can sometimes see a reflect reflection of yourself, and I find that to be really cool. So I was trying to draw that out of coffee, and I didn't finish, but um, it was going somewhere some more experiments. This is actually my interpretation of a painting by Victor Hugo, who is incredible. Highly recommend looking him up. Um, yeah, because we were looking at romanticism at the time. And these are some paintings inspired by that. Or really experiments, not paintings. Um, I think I even put nail polish in there. I was experimenting with as many different um, things that I could play around with ink and water. There's ink, there's nail polish, there's salt, a lot of stuff. So these are really quick charcoal drawings. I was trying to use a lot of energy into recording my environment. Um, and then I was bringing mixed media into it, so paint, um, collage, newspaper, tracing paper, um, ripping things, so just destroying essentially as a as a way of um, drawing. So yeah, destroying as a way of drawing by ripping um, parts of my drawing, and I felt like that created an interesting landscape. Um, yeah, a lot of mixed media stuff there, and paint blocking out the lights, trying to um, remove parts of the drawing to enhance it in a way. But as you can see, like this drawing isn't finished, this drawing isn't finished, and that was fine because it showed um, it showed a journey, it was, sh it was showing that like, I was trying to learn how to paint, and um, my final portfolio was a lot more refined, so this was a good compliment. So again, I was like trying to make a landscape, but um, what I kind of ended up doing in this project was, um, so here I took out the lines of the cars and I wanted to focus on the colours and blocking in the colours that I was seeing in, in front of me. And I kind of took that even further by like taking out, making it even more obscure um, and making the colours and the composition and the textures the focus of the painting. So I really like the prints as well of this and this really enables me by being so um, raw, organic and not precious, it made, it made me, it, it helped me um, identify really interesting methods of mark making which I used in my final paintings which were very unique to me um, so like even more I put used glue gun here as well you can see it's very very raw so this is um, important to me because the way I do painting is I use a palette knife and, some, and I use paintbrushes and my fingers and I mix my um, paints on paper and then I kind of like make strokes so that I can, you know, it's like getting rid of the excess on the palette knife or on the paintbrush and then putting it into the painting here, there, there. And that itself kind of ends up looking like a landscape. So it was interesting, um, my art teacher told me to like at least try and use part of the page as, as that palette method thing. But yeah, this is me trying to like re- um, Descri trying to describe the London city landscape in my my language and yeah, it's the final page, I kind of like this page more um, yeah, so the uh, this, I mean obviously this sketchbook isn't perfect it's very raw but they like the rawness um, you probably don't want to have stuff like this you don't want to have writing that looks like that if you want to put in notes, add in you know, you can have, maybe on the reverse, you can write in what you're thinking. Or have, I don't know. But, because no one's going to, I mean, I don't know, it's really, really messy. But they actually did like the messiness, so they might not mind that too much. And it's more, I mean, the sketchbook was very personal to me. 
um, looking through my portfolio and looking through the sketchbook, you can see a correlation and you can see that someone has genuinely used the sketchbook as a means to um, learn, to grow, to develop, and it's made a massive impact in their final portfolio. So you want your sketchbook to be like that. You want to be honest with your work. You don't want to have like perfect, tidy, really nicely laid out pages. I mean, it'd be great if you could, but you just have to be honest with yourself. And I was very honest with myself and this is the way I work. It works for me. And the interviewers liked it as well. I think when I was at the Bartlett, the, I had an amazing interview when I was at the Bartlett, she was really lovely, but she was like, this is like a second portfolio, and I thought, really? <laughs> because I didn't want to take that sketchbook to interview initially, because I thought it was like so messy. But this as well, this, this just shows a curiosity and an interest beyond studies, but it kind of related to my studies anyway, because I was thinking about this subject constantly. I was thinking about transit and journeys. I hope that's helpful, and part two will be coming soon.